this module shall enable you to learn and understand the following three things. One, fundamental principles of the WTO agreements. Two, some important exceptions to the WTO principles. And then, overview of the WTO agreements. Introduction. The World Trade Organization was formally constituted on January 1, 1995 as an international organization. It made a successful transition from negotiation approach of GATT, which was just an informal device to handle international trade since 1948. GATT was temporary in nature, whereas WTO is a permanent organization legislated as an outcome of the Uruguay round of GATT, that is 1986-94. The main objectives of the WTO are to reduce and eliminate tariffs and other barriers to trade, to improve the living standard of people in the member states by raising world production of goods and services, to ensure that world resources are efficiently utilized, to conserve the environment and ensure sustainable development, to promote world trade so that every country gets benefit, to ensure that developing nations get more advantage from increasing international trade, to demolish all obstacles to an open world trading system so as to achieve fastest economic growth, and lastly to increase competition among all trading partners so as to benefit consumers. In order to fulfill these goals, the WTO agreements were set up. These agreements focused on two main agendas. One, to reduce tariff and non-tariff barriers. Two, to implement non-discriminating trade policies. However, these two agendas were taken from GATT 1947 and had to be widened in order to meet the growing challenges in the international trade over time. Therefore, two new objectives were included in the WTO. These are concerned with environmental protection and economic development of developing countries, especially the least developed countries. Fundamental principles of the WTO agreements. Some of the basic principles of WTO agreements in order to achieve its above mentioned goals are 1. Most favored nation treatment principle. This principle is based on the notion that if one country is given some special treatment in international trade, then all other members should be treated equally. For instance, if country A, a WTO member, gives 10% reduction in tariff rates to country B, a non-WTO member, then this same reduction in tariff rate policy must be applied for all other WTO members as well in order to ensure stability in trade practices. This principle has been operational before GATT was formed. It helped in stimulation of bilateral trade agreements among countries and enhanced trade liberalization. However, in course of time, the functioning of most favored nation clause diminished and led to the creation of trade blocks. Thus, when GATT was formed, this principle was included again on 
a multilateral basis to ensure free trade system and finally due to its, its advantages it was carried forward to become one of the fundamental principles of WTO. However, some relaxations are permitted to member countries. For instance, countries can establish free trade agreement among member countries for some particular good or services and can freely discriminate against other countries or it can grant developing countries special rights to approach their markets or it can raise trade barriers against products which are considered to be hazardous or unsafe or involving some unfair trade practices. However, these agreements are permissible under stringent conditions. So, in short, under WTO, all nations have to be treated equally in respect of changing trade barriers. Principle of National Treatment The principle says that foreign goods, services, trademarks, copyrights and patents should be treated at par with domestic goods, services, trademarks, copyrights and patents. However, this principle is applicable only if foreign product, service or any item of intellectual property has entered domestic territory. Hence, the policies of internal taxes, internal laws etc. imposed on imports should be treated equivalent like that imposed on domestic products for all other member countries. Principle on quantitative restrictions. WTO restricts quantitative restrictions on the import and export of any good except that for duties or taxes imposed by any member. It believes that the protectionist and distortive effect of quantitative restrictions on free global trade is higher than that of tariff measures. For instance, if a country imposes tariff to reduce imports, then other trading partners can still increase its exports by making its product cost effective and thereby overcoming trade barriers caused by the tariff. However, if a country imposes quota to restrict imports, then its trading partner will not be able to increase its exports beyond quota limit. Therefore, quantitative restrictions cause more distortions in free trade and its elimination is one of the basic principles of WTO. However, some relaxations are allowed on special grounds of situations. For instance, if a country is exporting too much food grains so that it leads to severe shortage of food grains, then a country may be permissible to use quantitative measures. Also, if a country is facing severe balance of payment crisis on account of excessive imports, then it can restrict imports by imposing quantitative measures. Principle related to tariffs. Tariffs have the most common effect of raising domestic prices in the nation which imposes it. But its effect differ with the size of the country. For instance, in a small country, tariff increases the domestic prices by the amount equivalent to it whereas in large countries, tariff increases the domestic prices by somewhat lesser amount because a part of the tariff manifests itself in the form of lower international prices. This creates a gap in prices of importing and exporting nations. Thus, imposition of tariff leads to excess supply over demand 
in the importing country. However, its imposition is beneficial for government of importing country as it gets a revenue. Therefore, the net distortionary effect of tariff depends upon whether the cost to the consumer due to higher prices is greater than profits to producers and government revenue. If this is the case, then small countries are the ultimate sufferer because they are unable to reduce international prices and thus find no improvement in the terms of trade. In such a scenario, relatively lower tariff rates can help to protect domestic industries of small countries and to achieve this goal. WT sets as a principle to reduce tariff rates. Individual member countries formulate concessions on the maximum limit for their tariff rates beyond which they are not permissible to impose tariff. Some important exceptions to the basic principles. Though WTO establishes fundamental principles to WTO agreements, there are some important exceptions to this. Below mentioned are some of these exceptions. Anti-dumping measures. Dumping is referred to a situation in which home country sells a product at much lower price to a foreign country than within the country. But if the dumped imports result in loss to the domestic industries of importing countries, then the importing country may impose anti-dumping measures. However, this measure should be encouraged carefully to protect domestic industries as some countries may use it arbitrarily. Eurogear round made some negotiations to ensure discipline and to control misuse of anti-dumping measures. Subsidies and countervailing measures. Subsidies are provided in various forms such as grants, industrial development subsidies, research and development subsidies, regional development subsidies, structural adjustment subsidies, tax exemptions, export credits, low rate interest financing of projects, etc. Though subsidies provide protection to domestic industries, it may hamper competition that will prevail in a free market system. Therefore, WTO agreements restrict the use of export subsidies in case of industrial goods and use of domestic goods at the cost of imported one. Also, it allows member states to impose countervailing duties if export subsidy of another country hampers its domestic industries. In case of agriculture commodities, WTO agreements try to ensure lower export subsidies. Overview of the WTO agreements. WTO agreements hold central position in the WTO process of achieving its goal of trade liberalization. Its agreements include all goods and services and intellectual property rights. Almost all of the WTO agreements are a result of Uruguay round of negotiations of 1986-1994. Its basic aim is to induce member countries to reduce tariff and non-tariff barriers and to open their markets for foreign countries. WTO agreements define procedure for settling international trade disputes between member countries. Also, there are some agreements which deal with the welfare of developing countries. Governments of all member countries are required to make their trade policies in accordance with the agreements and principles of the WTO and enhance their competitiveness 
and transparency. Agreement establishing the WTO, annexing 1A general agreement on tariffs and trade, annex 1B general agreement on trade and services, annex 1C trade related aspects of intellectual property rights, annex 2 dispute settlement understanding, annex 3 trade policy review mechanism and lastly annex 4 plurilateral trade agreements. Marrakesh agreement establishing the WTO. Manifested by the Marrakesh declaration, the Marrakesh agreement was signed in Marrakesh, Morocco on 15th April 1994. It made the culmination of the 12 year long Uruguay round and established the World Trade Organization. On January 1, 1955, it officially came into being. It was also supported by numerous other agreements on issues including trade in services, sanitary and phytosanitary measures, trade related aspects of intellectual property and technical barriers to trade. The agreement developed out of the general agreement on trade and tariff. A new more productive and lawfully mandatory means of dispute resolution was also established. No entity could be a party to any one of these agreements without being party to them all. And hence, the various accords which make up the Marrakesh agreement are a combination of an indivisible whole. Annex 1A General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade 1994 The Marrakesh Agreement which establishes the WTO clearly mentions that the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade 1994 is legally different from the General Agreements on Tariffs and Trade 1947. GATT 1994 covers A. All provisions of GATT 1947 B. All provisions which come under GATT 1947 before its entry into WTO agreements such as rectifications, amendments or modifications which were introduced through the rules of pre Uruguay round legal instruments. C. Interpretation of a number of GATT articles which were included at the end of the Uruguay round. And D. The Marrakesh Protocol to GATT 1994. The legal instruments included into GATT 1994 are 1. Protocols and certifications related to tariff concessions. 2. Protocols of Accession 3. Waivers These instruments have same status in GATT 1994 as it was in GATT 1947. Agreement on Agriculture In 1995, when the WTO was established, all agriculture products were covered under multilateral trade rules under the name of WTO's Agreement on Agriculture. The agreement includes market access, export competition and domestic support. All WTO member countries are required to liberalize agricultural trade except for least developed countries. Under market access, all developed and developing countries are required to convert all non-tariff barriers into simple tariffs. Also, there is an upper limit to tariffs and cannot be raised beyond that limit. It is important to note that all developed countries under this agreement have to reduce import tariffs by 36% over a 6 year period. Whereas developing countries have to reduce 
import tariffs by 24% over a 10 year period. Also under export competition, the developed countries have to reduce the value and volume of uh, export subsidies by 36% and 24% respectively over a 6 year period and developing countries have to reduce it by 24% and 10% respectively over a 10 year period. Agreement on the application of sanitary and phytosanitary measures. This agreement sets multilateral structures for the planning and implementation of sanitary and phytosanitary measures in order to prevent them from being misused and if wrongly used then it may lead to discrimination or hidden restriction on international trade. Agreement on textiles and clothing. Earlier textile trade was governed by the multi-fiber arrangement but now the WTO agreement requires that textile trade should be deregulated by easing import protection policies and gradually integrating it into GATT disciplines. Agreement on technical barriers to trade. This agreement focuses on standards and conformity assessment system, industrial standards and safety rules. Norms on environment protection should be such that they are not abused for personal interest. Otherwise, they may become unnecessary trade barriers. Hence, its aim is to achieve transparency in standards and conformity assessment systems and its harmonization with international standards. Agreement on trade related investment measures. In the late 1980s, there was a significant increase in flow of foreign direct investment in all over the world. However, this inflow of FDI was restricted by some countries by imposing many restrictions such as local content requirements which require purchase or use of locally produced goods, manufacturing requirements for example some components to be manufactured domestically, trade balancing requirements which requires import of products be equal in amount to the volume or value of domestic products exported. Domestic sales requirements that is measures restricting the export of products, technology transfer requirements, export performance requirements that is a fixed percentage of output volume to be exported, foreign exchange restrictions restricting the import of product used in local production in order to prevent outflow of foreign exchange, remittance restrictions, licensing requirements and employment restrictions in order to protect domestic industries. All these restrictions acted as trade barrier and in the Uruguay round negotiations were made to regulate investment measures. The TRIMS agreement prohibited investment measures that violate the principle of national treatment and general elimination of quantitative restrictions. Also, it explicitly prohibits local content requirements, trade balancing requirements, foreign exchange restrictions and export restrictions that is domestic sales requirements. Anti-dumping agreement. As seen above, the WTO principles allow for some exceptions like anti-dumping measures. However, this agreement states that this measure should be encouraged carefully to protect domestic industries as some countries may use it arbitrarily. Uruguay round made some negotiations to ensure discipline in the method of calculating dumping margins and frequently conducting dumping investigations 
to control misuse of anti dumping measures customs valuation agreement this agreement sets special rules in order to harmonize customs valuation systems with international system by removing arbitrary valuation mechanism agreement on import licensing procedures this agreement prevents import licensing procedures from becoming an undesirable and trade barrier by simplifying administrative operations agreement on subsidies and countervailing measures wto principles allow for some exceptions in the subsidies domain though subsidies provide protection to domestic industries it may hamper competition that will prevail in a free market system therefore wto agreements restrict the use of export subsidies in case of industrial goods and use of domestic goods at the cost of imported one also it allows member states to impose countervailing duties if export subsidy of another country hampers its domestic industries in case of agriculture commodities wto agreements try to ensure lower export subsidies thus the wto agreement clearly defines subsidies its various forms and procedures for implementing countervailing duties annex 1b general agreement on trade in services this agreement is an extension of multilateral trade system to the services it provides rules such as most favored nation treatment to ensure trade liberalization and transparency in services trade also it prohibits member countries from putting restrictions on market access and other discriminatory measures that may hamper trade in services annex 1c agreement on trade related aspects of intellectual property rights that is trips intellectual properties such as copyrights patents trademarks geographical location hidden information etc are covered under this agreement it states most favored nation treatment and national treatment principle for protection of intellectual property rights also member countries are obliged under this act to maintain protect and administer intellectual property protection system in addition it set rules for the settling of dispute related to intellectual property rights annex 2 understanding on rules and procedures governing the settlement of disputes it establishes common rules and procedure for dispute settlement on trade related issues in member countries its objective is to prohibit discriminatory measures by members ensuring quick settlement of disputes by making panels time frames and instituting an appellate body for the same annex 3 trade policy review mechanism this agreement sets procedures for review of trade policies of member countries also it performs regular review of trade policies and practices of member countries annex 4 plurilateral trade agreements that is agreements on trade in civil aircraft this agreement is related to trade in civil aircraft and subsidies however negotiations conducted on this issue under the tokyo round have not been fully resolved agreement on government procurement it requires government of member countries to make their procurement laws more transparent and fair in accordance with the national 
treatment principle. The scope of the agreement has been widened to cover procurement of goods as well as services. In addition, not only central government but also all sub-central governments, government related agencies are required to regulate their procurement laws under this agreement. Summary The World Trade Organization in its entirety is a holistic unit working towards the betterment of trade for its member nations. For its smooth functioning, it depends on its strong principles and fundamentals. It has formulated various agreements with its members. These include the likes of Annex 1C, trade related aspects of intellectual property rights, that is TRIPS, Annex 2, dispute settlement understanding, Annex 3, trade policy review mechanism, Annex 4, plurilateral trade agreements and others. These agreements are a major part of the working and functioning of the WTO and are at the same time a support system for it.